School Online. We are doing the first in a series of videos to help you prepare for your practical go in the exam. Um, we think we've covered everything. If you feel we can improve or do anything more, please leave your comments and we'll have a go at putting up something new. Thank you. Okay, so before any exam, you'd be expected to watch the horse trot up. Uh, and the reason would be to check for deviations in movement and all that kind of thing. The chances are good that if there is a deviation or a slight lameness, the examiner will ask you about them, what you're going to do about them, can you do anything about them. Uh, so it's a very good idea to sort of become really clued up as far as conformation goes and lamenesses go and spotting lameness and so on because you will be asked about it. But uh, we'll try to up now. Okay, you'll watch the way they track through the air. This may tracks quite nicely. There's no sign of interference or anything like that. Uh, so you'd be fairly safe from being quizzed on this. So it's nice to get one that moves well. I think she stepped on a rock there. She showed a couple of um, steps of lameness. And if you see something like that, better to trot up again and make sure that um, it isn't a lameness, that it was just a funny step. Okay, so it seemed to be a bit of a lameness. What are we here, now. Okay. It does seem to be a little bit of a niggle in the off four. When you watch the move, if they lift the leg when they put the foot down, uh, lift their heads when they put that foot down. She's like lifting her head a little bit when she puts her right foot down, which suggests that there's a little bit of a feeling in her right foot but we'll check for it now in the hoof testers and that sort of thing. At this point your the clock hasn't started yet you will be expected to clean up the foot or both feet you were going to be working on and uh, look for any deviations or flares or capsular distortions and speak to your examiner about that when they come up and go through the horse with you. Foot. At this point, only a hoof pick and a brush is allowed, no knifing or anything else like that. Um, this is a fairly regular shaped hoof. There wouldn't be too many things to discuss about it. There are a little bit, a few flares uh, that you would dress off before actually getting to work on her. Um, but that's pretty normal, it's, it's not something to worry about. She's on six weeks since her last chewing. Um, doesn't look like it. But it's the end of winter and the felt is dry, so feed quality isn't what it should be. So her growth has been a little slower than what it would be through the wet season and there's a lot of greenery around. This foot veers off a little bit at the toe. We'll try and sort all that out before actually shaping the shoe. We want to try and make the foot as easy to fit as possible. Still in a case like this, there wouldn't be too much to discuss with your examiner. She's pretty straightforward. As we saw, she was a good mover. There's nothing to try and sort out there. Okay, oh now. So once the examiner's given you the go ahead, then the clock starts and for most certification, exams, basic certification exams, you'd have an hour more complicated, it gets longer. We clean up either side of the frog. Uh, one wants it all neat and nice, but you don't want to over trim, you are judged on that sort of thing as well. It's not all about what you take away, it's also what you leave. Sometimes more important to leave 
a bit rather than take too much. Important to make sure that all your tools are really sharp before you actually start. Yeah, in the Karoo we need really sharp tools. The felt is hard and dry. Like I say, this one hasn't grown too much. I probably won't use the snips on them. I'll just go with a bit of rasp. I like the hoof gauge to test for level. If you put it down and it rocks, then you've got a high spot. In this case, it looks like there and here. Let's give it a little touch there and a touch there. Levels really important. You don't want to burn your thing to level and matching up a uneven foot to a, uneven shoes a nightmare. So you want your foot as level as you can there. There's no more rocking, it's all good. Um, I was talking about making it easier to fit. You'll see there's a bit of an unevenness as far as your wall thicknesses go. I'm gonna take it down to get that curve flowing a bit more keep an eye on the white line you don't want to dress the roof into the white line you trim away the pressure in the seat of corn you don't want that and you also want to be sure there's no sole pressure those are both immediate fails you clean out your sole all the way to the white line. Brush it out again. Like I said earlier, you don't want to harm the hoof in your efforts to make it as pretty as possible for the judge or the examiner. So I'm not going to mess around yet too much. You're going to end up with a thin sole, which could get you into trouble. Any blood. You are stopped immediately, you won't be able to go on. Um, I'll test for shoe size. As you can see here, it's a fairly square toed shoe and a pointy shaped foot. Uh, we're going to have to make allowances for that or change your shoe. We're fitting with toe clips. Very difficult to fit a toe clip if you're Profiles don't match up. I'm not going to square off the toe unless it's called for. Um, I'd rather fit the shoe to the foot. And it looks like the one is a good one. At this point, I would take the shoe and I'd put it in the forge to start warming up. You know, it's all about time. So time management is of the essence. You'd stick it in the forge so that when you finish coming, the other foot, this one is ready to shape and size. Um, I like to measure the foot and write it down across the widest part. This foot is 135 millimeters, not sure about inches. So that's 135 heel to toe. It's also just under 135. And from buttress to buttress. It's 65, so I've got 135, 135, and 65. I've done things like this. Uh, I'll make a column for shape, which we've put up on the whiteboard there as well, but this will be what you work off at the exams. Getting a picture of the hoof in your mind is important. Uh, like I said, this one's pointy. I'm going to have to get a bit more of a point in the shoe before I draw the clip. And I've uh, written the exact sizes. We're going to go a little bit wider and a little bit narrower on the heel just to get the fit. Well, I'll show you just now when we've done the fitting. Um, but these measurements are important. They make your life a lot easier. We can dress up the foot. Okay, this one's got a bit more of a distorted hoof capsule, as I pointed out earlier. It comes out more to the lateral side. Then just tidy up the frog. 
without getting too gung ho with your knife. Get rid of all loose stuff. Clean up that. Again, I'll just run a rasp over this. Especially when you're outfitting, you don't want to go too short. And make, keep a little bit of sole depth and keep yourself away from any sensitive tissue. When you find marks like this, don't get in there. As it is, the examiner can see that is a piece that was broken out before you actually got started. And they'll forgive you for that way. If you start going in there with your rasp or whatever, then they reckon you own it. You've got to make the foot fit everything. But there we will forgive a bit of a, a gap between the shoe and the hoof. Again, get the lines curved, flowing. Make your foot as easy as possible to fit. I'm taking that point back a little bit. Trim away sole pressure. Away the pressure in the buttress, seat of corn. Again, we don't want to overdo anything, we just want it nice and neat while not harming the horse. Um, Don't want to shoe flares, but as I said earlier, you don't want to press the roof down to the white line. You leave yourself nothing to nail up. You now mark the appearance of the finish of your foot. So just get all this out of the way. A little bit of a flare there. One of these sandboxes that <coughs> come out. Does a really nice job of finishing off the foot, giving yourself a nice presentable thing. You'll do more of this at the end of the shoeing when you nailed on before you hand it over to the examiner to give you a final point. Tidy up all the way to the back, don't stop halfway. Take away that little flare. I'm not changing my measurements at all. I had shaped the foot from the other side as much as I wanted to. Now I'm dressing those bevels out. Same to the other foot. You know, a bit of a raggediness here. Take it away as much as you can without harming your foot. Slightly narrower than the other side. 133 on the widest part, heel to toe, same as the other one, 135, buttress to buttress, also 65, so the only difference between these two hooves is two millimeters in the width. Uh, when you look at the shape, you've got a slightly straighter medial side to the hoof and a bit of lateral what looks like flare but uh, I can't dress away anymore so I wouldn't classify it as flare but those are the things that you keep in mind when you're shaping your shoe okay that would be the trim always mark your shoes or mark the outside branch just with a dot so now you're working on left or you're working on right by now, my left shoe would already be 
Pak na stůl kon. foot was a bit more pointy than the other one uh, so I have to match the shoe to that and this is how we do it we've got the middle point where that point would be you go just past it and you hit there kind of lifts out that branch you do the same thing the other way tap it just off you don't want to pinch your metal I've done the clip because drawing the clip tends to distort everything but at this point I find to get that more pointy shape into the shoe it's best to do it before you actually drawing the clip. Now that to me is enough point I'll stick it back in the fire and get it dark enough to draw the clip. This is the right foot you remember that we wanted a bit more play on the off side or no, lateral side
135, which is good. You don't want to go the exact size of the foot. A little bit too close. about good heel to heel is 60 which will take us 65 should cover the heels properly and we have to take in a tiny bit more check of the shape about 137 as well that should be okay too wide in the heel so I just need to make a bit so I can bend them Cover your heels. If you're not covering your heels, it's also an immediate fail. I don't even look further. It should cover the heels. Might end up a little bit too narrow for that foot. It was a shade wider than the other one. I'm 
that one 58 now it should be good I'll do a little hammer box again before you set the, clo uh, the clip back just make sure that you level in the toe it's the easiest to do while the clip's upright once that's done you can back to the angle of the roof more or less. Get the level. See the level shoe and the level foot match up so much easier, makes the task that much easier. So we're more or less on target. I'll warm up the shoe and put them on. This is the off for take a pixel with me in case I put a bit of pressure anywhere. Line everything up. I'll just cut this toe clip into place. You've left a little bit of a burn there. That's your marker, you stick your knife in there. Just means you won't have to keep the foot against the shoe too long. Or the shoe against the foot. Put it in place. Like I said, the pretzel might help. You put a little bit of pressure there. Okay, that's what I was saying about a nice level foot. And a nice level shoe, it doesn't take much of a burn to get them to match up. This is a good time to make sure you have no sole pressure. The burn leaves your sole a little bit softer than it is before you actually burn it. So that's okay. Now that it's cooled a bit, let's just have one more look. Wheels are covered, not too much foot hanging over. I think that one is good. everything up before you actually touch it on again clean out this little area for the toe clip don't overdo that you don't want to make big gaping holes behind your clip Again, we see a nice level foot and a nice level shoe, and the two meet up without too much burning. Yeah. 
for running back and forth. The toe clips blended into the roof wall. It's not standing up straight or burning too deep in. We've got the heels covered. And at this point it doesn't look like there are any sprung heels. Sprung heel is when you've got a gap between the shoe and the hoof and that's also a point deduction so it's a big fault. Okay. Try and get your nails lined up as well as possible. Sometimes a bit difficult with the horse that's coming off shoes. Old nail holes catch you and pull you off. But you do the best you can. Oh. Oh. I like to start one side. And start the other side, otherwise you find the nails going to push your shoe out of position. And keep your nails all perpendicular to the shoe, not leaning forward or backward unless you're trying to miss a fault in the roof like a crack or an opening or old nail hole. Keep your nails ahead of the widest part of the foot. Well, definitely not behind the widest part of the foot. Okay, now I use a clinch block and overdo the force of the armor. I didn't make is before you actually get to this point you ask the judge to check your shoe or the examiner to check your shoe, check your fit. As they give you the go ahead, giving yourself time to do a task, be sure to allow a bit of time for the examiner to look. A lot of people complain about the examiners, especially when there are lots of candidates. Take too long to get to the horse, but that's Par for the course, that's what every candidate has to put up with. It's, the examiners also can just do so much. And finally, the old nail hole. low so you want to get them as close as possible to line up and 
These are points easily made or easily given away. Bit of damaged roof here, which is making it a bit difficult, but like I say, you've got to deal with what you ended. Come to the clinching. Clinch with a clinch stone or hammer clinch. Depending what your examiner asks for, they don't normally specify, but we prefer prepared both ways. Take off the excess nail. If you've tuned your snips properly, they will cut off the same amount every time. Let's tidy up there a little bit underneath a little bit then I'll take the little gouge just to seat the nails properly I'll start with the hammer clinch just to show you we start hitting down, perpendicular, not backwards or forwards. No need to bash the foot. Soft blows are good. See, everything is lined up and they are all perpendicular facing down. I'll finish it off a little bit with the rasp. Finishing rasp. over your flinches you don't want them too prominent take your sander I'm a big believer in work on one side get it done and move on to the other side you know, back and forth all the time Again, just snip your nails. A little bit of a clean out, don't leave any sort of rasp marks gouging out underneath your clinches. You will gouge different types of these. You take what you prefer hammer, hammer gouge or push gouge. The clinching tongue again, line them up, the head, the top jaw, and push them both in the same direction. You don't want clinches lying forwards, backwards, all over the place, all perpendicular to your shoe surface. Judged on finish. I want to lose unnecessary points keeping these games. Make it look good. Little sweat puffs them up quite nicely. Normally there isn't a shortage of sweat when you get to this point. My sander might be a little coarse, you could get something finer just to give it an even better finish. Thing this side, I'll go hammer clinch on the inside and clinch tongs on the outside. And again, you're working with live tissue, don't beat it to death.
Those aren't as glecky as I wanted them to be here. Yeah. Um, bit of distortion, well, damage to the roof from a previous shoeing. This is making it difficult to line the nails up as well as I wanted to. Straight up and down. Right into the back there, slide it up. Okay. You can see we've got a, enough sticking out on the side here. We've got it boxed down to where that, the back foot wouldn't catch on there too easily. It'll slip off and that's what we're talking about, the purpose of boxing. If you could look, look in there, I don't know if the camera's close enough, but there's no light visible there, so they, that's not a sprung heel. You check each one of your heels like that. Um, once it's at this point, you probably won't be able to go back and fix it. So better when you do your initial check, be check before going to nail on to make sure that you don't have that. Yeah, like I was saying, we covered the heels. Um, the branches of the shoe aren't interfering with the frog. We've tidied up as much as we can. Like I say, we live in a really dry area and I don't want to go and overknife the sole and cause any damage. But I'd be happy with that and I reckon it would be a pass. The nails are pretty much lined up, which is actually also just an aesthetic thing. It's not so much a practical thing, but it's what scores you points. Um, the clips have followed the line of the hoof which is what you want, you run your finger over there, you can't feel where the one stops and the other one starts. Same this side, here we've got a nice nail line, nice nail line. So I'd be happy with that, thanks a bunch. Thanks again for watching, if you have any feedback or suggestions feel free to leave them in the comment section below, we would love to hear from you. If you liked this video you would perhaps also be interested in our online academy, We've recently launched a study aid for Chris Gregory's amazing textbook of farriery. The study aid is designed to help you prepare for your examination by testing your knowledge in the form of online quizzes. For more information you can also visit our home page. You can find the link in the description below this video.